as you guys know the new team infinity 5 will come out november 19th so i thought you know i might as well go ahead and try to guess each card we're gonna get now there will probably be some cards that won't be in here that you guys will probably want to see leave me a comment let me know if i missed anybody there's a lot of people to choose from so i tried to do my best here so you guys bear with me hopefully i make the right decision for you guys if you guys do enjoy the video make sure you guys leave a like make sure you guys do subscribe as well and let's get right into it so the first card we're going to talk about is for the baltimore orioles it is ryan mountcastle now i was debating between him and john means i decided to just go with ryan mountcastle i just really liked what he's put together had a great rookie year last year this year he batted 255 he had 33 home runs as well you know at 80 in rbis he had a slugging percentage of 487 he had a war of 0.09 you know nothing crazy right there at that but you know all in all he had a great year he can play first base he can play third base he can play with the outfield as well he's gonna have some major major power attributes you know contact will be pretty good as well only thing might be lacking with him is his fielding of course they're gonna boost these these team infinity five cards they're gonna have better stuff but that's like the one thing with this car that probably won't be great but ryan mountcastle should be your baltimore orioles team infinity five next we have the boston red sox now this one was kind of hard to choose as well you know xander already has a couple of nice really high cards you know you also have jd martinez you ended up having a great year uh, you know there's a lot of cards to choose from from here but i'm gonna go ahead and go with xander as well i just really like what's put together this year and we batted 295 he did have 23 home runs as well uh, he had 79 rbis he had five stolen bases so you know the standing's not gonna be there but you can add it on there as well um he had a 493 slug percentage as well had a great year obviously the contacts would be nice a little bit of the power a little bit down lower hopefully we get a little bit boosted on the fielding as well not a great fielder at least in emily's show his eyes so hopefully we'll see you know some better fielding attributes there nonetheless he'll be a great shortstop to use i think this was a no-brainer for the yankees uh garrett cole and there's really nobody else that was on the same level as him at least with the yankees you know you'd have aaron judge had a really nice year stan had a really nice year we already have a really high uh overall for standing already so we're gonna go ahead and go with garrett cole here he had uh 60 wins eight losses this year 5.7 war which is really good 3.23 era uh you know obviously started every game that he pitched in 181 innings pitched 243 strikeouts and a 1.059 whip had a great year obviously garrett cole is a very very good pitcher had a little bit of a you know a little rough patch there after the sticky stuff situation but obviously after that went ahead and did what he did what he has been doing for the past couple of years miss him in the berg we obviously miss him in pittsburgh but garrett curl will be your new york yankees team of 55. looking at the tampa bay rays there are some pretty good players uh, you know on their team as well i'm gonna go ahead and go with brandon loud i know this is kind of a, a weird one right here you know uh wander came up did a really good job what is a 99 though uh you know randy rose Arena, we could get a high card for him had a fantastic year towards the end there i'm gonna go ahead and go with brandon loud like i said earlier the biggest problem with this card is gonna be his contact we'll see you know jared walsh kind of the same ordeal i guess against lefties where he didn't do very well you know batting average wise and they gave him a pretty decent card for team for team infinity three or yeah team infinity three whatever the all-star game team infinity was he did bat 247 but the biggest thing with him is he had 39 home runs he's gonna have a ton of power you know he is a great fielder too i mean they're gonna probably give him a little bit better boost there on fielding speeds okay it's so so but make sure you guys we're gonna have some major power with this card contact was rising to be really good too contact really is the only thing that might be a little skewed i think maybe they'll get that to like a 70. you know like i said they do boost these cards but i think brandon Lau will be your team infinity five for the race there are a lot of deserving people on the blue jays i'm gonna go ahead and go with boba shea you know we already have a high vlad card you know a lot of the cards that they've already given out already have high you know overall cards i know i did that with xander bogarts already we know the task hernandez is another one just to name a few but i'm gonna go ahead and go with boba Shets. I really liked what he did this year. He bet a 298. Great, great year for him. He did have 29 home runs as well, just one short of 30. Had 25 stolen bases. Just think if he would have had one more home run, five more stolen bases. He's in the 30 30 club right there. I feel like a lot of people don't really talk about that, but you know, he did have a 484 slugging percentage. You know, he just had a really good year this year. He's going to have great, great hitting attributes against lefties. Righties, not so much, but they still will give him good attributes there. Fielding is, you know, it's not always there. But what I will say, I mean, he, he, he had a decent year of fielding. He will get better attributes there. Stealing and base aggressive will probably go actually up. They'll give him a little bit more speed there as well. But I do think that Boba Shirt would be your team in 55. 
for the White Sox, we're going to go with Lance Lynn. And it seems like the older he gets, the better he gets with age. If you guys remember, he was with the Cardinals for a long time. Didn't do bad per se, but he just has gotten better with older age. He was 11 and 6 this year. He had a 2.69 ERA. He was fantastic, man. You know, he did have 176 strikeouts and 157 innings pitched. Obviously, his for nine is going to be way through the roof with him. You know, the K's for nine, not so much, but again, they're going to boost that for him. Walks for nine would boost it as well. Maybe even get a little velocity boost, you know, on, on his fastball as well. They did give him that all star game card too. But, you know, who wouldn't like a 99 overall? Lance Lynn as well for the White Sox. He's going to be a good card. We'll see if, he, uh, if they go ahead and give him one. This entire year, I don't know what it was with SDS, but for the Indians, we're going to go Emmanuel Classe. For some reason, they never wanted to give him a boost. He was literally a bronze up until I think not this past roster update, but the one before that. He had a 1.29 ERA. 1.29 ERA. And he was a bronze card. He had 74 strikeouts and 69 innings pitched. Probably has the fastest cutter ever, man. This dude throws over 100 with his cutter. He had a 0.962 whip as well, which is insane. Hits for nine again through the roof. Case for nine, not as great. But, I mean, if you're throwing over 100-something with a cutter like that, he's already kind of hard to hit up in, in Battle Royale. Just imagine this card on Legend. Going to be insane. Walks are good. He doesn't give me a home run. So, this should be a really, really nice card. And he will be your team infinity for the Indians. Now, the Tigers were kind of a hard one to do. Uh, you know, there wasn't really too much there. Jonathan Scope had a really good year. You know, Tariq Scooball had a, had a pretty decent year as well. I'm going to go and go with Casey Mize. You guys remember the 99 Future Stars Casey Mize card from last year? Very good card. A lot of people like using him, so I would not mind getting a 99 card with him as well. He, he was 7 and 9 this year. He had a 3.71 ERA. He had 150 innings pitch and 118 strikeouts. Now, he's not going to have a great K's per nine. That's all right. He should have some good hits per nine. Uh, he had a 1.137 whip. You know, he should have some good stamina. They're going to go ahead, like I said, give him some good hits per nine as well. K's per nine won't be great, but everything else across the board should be pretty decent. I think he will be the Detroit Tigers team Infinity 5. All right, for the Royals, stop me if you've heard this one before. I'm going to go with Salvador Perez. Now, I know Salvador Perez already has some really good cards. There just really wasn't anybody else for the Royals that was amazing this year. Now, Nicky Lopez did have a really good year as well, so maybe they give him one. I mean, it won't be that crazy of a card. You want to have great power, you have good contact, good fielding. We're going to go, go ahead and go with Salvador Perez. Obviously, had a fantastic year, especially the power numbers. 48 home runs, which I think is the most by a catch from the AL ever. He did bat 273 too, so nothing sluggish there. He did have a 544 slugging percentage, and he did have a 5.3 war, which is amazing, especially for a catcher. Again, his hitting attributes are going to be nice. The only thing will be his right-handed contact. Won't be great, but he'll still be very usable there. He was a pretty decent fielder as well. I know he's getting a little bit older now, but all in all, Sauer Perez had a fantastic year. He already has a lot of cards to prove it. Why not give him a 99 just to show it off as well? We're going to go with Sauer Perez as our Kansas City Royals team affinity. Now, the Minnesota Twins was kind of another tough one as well. I mean, if, if Byron Buxton could have stayed healthy the entire year, man, Maybe could have been an MVP, man. He was unbelievable. I'm going to go ahead and go with Jorge Polanco. Now, I know he does have a higher tiered card as well already. I don't think it's anywhere near a 99, though. So, with that switch hitting ability with him, he can play shortstop. Now, granted, he doesn't have great defense, but his hitting attributes, he was very good this year. 269. He had 33 home runs in Minnesota as well. Um, you know, had an on base percentage of 323, had a slugging percentage of 503 as well. So he's going to have some really good power. He's going to even have some good contact as well. Switch hitting ability. He's got a little bit of speed too. We will go ahead and have him be our Minnesota Twins Team Infinity 5. Now for the Astros, I feel like for whatever reason, Kyle Tucker was like never talked about up until about like a month or two ago with how good of a season he had now the astros do have a couple of good guys as well yordan just got a higher tier card you know kendall graveman had a pretty good year as well we're gonna go with kyle tucker he had 30 home runs batted 294 he did have 14 stolen bases now i don't know exactly what percentage he had right there but he does have 85 steals so that's already good to look at that on his card right now oh, he did great against righties obviously looking at his contact and his power there amazing only thing you know contact versus lefties not the best 69, but you know, they'll go ahead and, and, and bring that up quite a bit. Had pretty decent fielding too. His arm and his accuracy won't be great, but they'll give him better fielding. Kyle Tucker had a fantastic year. Go ahead and be your Astros team Infinity Five. Now we have our Los Angeles Angels. 
I don't think there was anybody else we could have chose here. We have Ray Sill Iglesias. Obviously, Show had a great year, but we already have a 99 for him, so they're not going to give him a team of 55 for that. Now, they could do maybe something weird, do a pitching and hitting card. I don't think they're going to be able to do that this year, at least. We're going to go ahead and go with Ray Sill Iglesias. Had a 2.57 ERA, pitched seven innings, had 103 strikeouts, had a whip under one, a .929. Just looking at his live series card, already an amazing card. He's going to have some great, great attributes here. I wouldn't be surprised if he's in the 120s for his hits and his Ks per nine. Obviously, he gives some home runs, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. Everything else across the board is going to be really good. He's got a really glitchy release, too. I mean, maybe they're throwing a sinker. I mean, who knows? Ray Sil Iglesias should be the Los Angeles Angels team at 55. So we have the Oakland A's. Now, we don't have a high Chris Bass. Now, Chris Bass is actually one of my favorite BR cards to draft. When he was a silver, I used him all the time. Again, even as a gold, he's still a great draft pick. So we're going to go ahead and go with Chris Bassett here. He had a really scary moment this year, too, when he got hit in the head. Thankfully, he was okay. Uh, he was 12-4 and four this year with a 3.15 ERA. Only had 159 strikeouts and 157 innings pitch, which isn't amazing. Had a decent whip, just a little bit above one. His hits per nine are great. You know, people did not bat well against him again. They'll be through the roof. He'll have a decent Ks per nine. Obviously, he'll have great stamina as well. He's got the great pitch mix with the sinker and cutter. Maybe they give him a little bit of a velocity boost there too. I really like Chris Bass, and I think it should be a really good card for us too. Now, the Mariners had a couple options too. We had Mitch Hanniger who had a really good year. Paul Seawald had a really good year as well. I'm going to go ahead and go with Ty France. Now, he's just a card I like to see to have another overall boost there. I know he has a high, I think it's a player of the month card or a monthly award card somewhere or tops now, somewhere in there. I really, really like that card. So I would love to see a 99 card for Ty France. He plays, you know, first, second, and third too. So he's got a little bit of utility reasons there too we can put him wherever we want to but he did have a really good year offensively he had 18 home runs he did about 291 as well just a shade below 300 he had a good little slugging percentage nothing too crazy there 4.3 war as well he could be probably leaning towards probably one of the one of the worst team infinity five cards but with a little bit of versatility there i'm sure it'll be a nice one now the rangers didn't have a lot of options either adolis garcia had a really good year I'm going to go and go with Nathan Lau. Now, Nathan Lau is actually one of, one of my favorite VR picks as well. So maybe a little bit of bias there. But Nathan Lau had a really good year. 18 home runs. He bet at 264. He did have eight stolen bases too. For a first baseman, that's pretty decent. So we might have some nice stealing attributes there for a first baseman. He's really good against righties. Not so much against lefties. So don't expect anything crazy with that. I mean, he's just a nice, solid card. You know, the Rangers didn't have very many options. So I'm going to go ahead and go with Nathan Lau here. So the Braves was actually a really hard one to choose from. You, know, you have Freddie Freeman, you don't have a 99 yet. I think hopefully we get an MVP Freddie Freeman. If not, he will be the finest. You know, Ozzy always had a really good year as well. Uh, there are a lot of guys to choose from, from this one. I'm going to go with Austin Riley. I think Austin Riley had a fantastic year. He had 33 home runs. He batted 303, had a 6.1 war. He can play first, third, and the outfield. Only thing with Austin Riley is he doesn't have a lot of power versus lefties. He does have decent fielding ability. Not great per se, but you know, you can put him at third base. He'll be fine there. He has decent speed too. 63 speed for a big guy like him. 246.3. We love to see that. So he'll have some really, really great hitting attributes. I'm obviously they're gonna go ahead and boost up his his lefty power, so he will be nice. Let's go with Austin Riley here. If not, it'll be Freddie Freeman. The Miami Marlins didn't have many to choose from either. I'm going to go with Sandy Alcantara, though. He's got a pretty good pitch mix with that sinker. I like that. I would love to see uh, him, uh, you know, with a higher tiered card. He was 9 and 15, a 3.19 ERA, 205 innings pitch, 201 strikeouts, you know, just a whip barely above one. He's got great hits for nine. Again, not great case for nine. He does have that sinker. He throws decently hard, too. He's got a really good pitch mix with a slider, changeup, and the curveball as well. He should be a nice card. Probably the Miami Marlins team of 55. Now we have the New York Mets. We're going to go with Marcus Stroman. And I love its pitch mix. He's got the sinker. He's got the cutter. He just had like a really solid year for the Mets. Uh, he had a 3.02 ERA, 179 inning pitched. He only had 158 strikeouts, which obviously it shows very well in this card right here. Not going to have great Ks per nine. Uh, hits per nine are going to be really good. I wouldn't be surprised if that was, you know, 115 maybe. Stamina will be way up there as well. Again, his pitch mix is what really lures people in. Not great velocity, but I'm sure they'll bump up a little bit. Let's go with Marcus Strong for the Mets. Next, we have the Philadelphia Phillies. And with Bryce Harper already having a 99 MVP card, I don't see them doing the finest card for him. So let's go with Zach Wheeler. And Zach Wheeler had a phenomenal year. Had a 2.78 ERA. Uh, had 247 strikeouts too. 
you know, just 53 shy of 300. Really great year. He's going to have great hits per nine, great stamina. He's going to have everything. He's going to be fantastic on this card. Pitch mix is okay. I wish that maybe he had a little bit of a cutter in there, but he does have the sinker. He has a fastball. He throws hard too. This could be a really, really sneaky good card. Zach Wheeler for Philadelphia Phillies Team Infinity 5. All right, I think we've waited long enough to finally get our 991 Soto. If you guys remember last year, it was a Team Infinity. He's going to be a Team Infinity again. Had a phenomenal year, fantastic year. Had a little bit of a struggle for a little bit, but the, the second half, I think, might have been one of the best second halves ever in MLB history. Ended up batting 313 with 29 home runs. He had nine stolen bases, too. Let's bring that steal up a little bit right there. Had a seven more, too, which is which is unreal, man. He had a fantastic year. All across the board, he's going to have probably 120 hitting attributes because he's just that good. Fielding will be very good, too. He'll be really good. I, I guarantee really good. The speed is the only thing that's not going to be great there. But Juan Soto will finally get our 99. Cannot wait to use him. So with the Cubs pretty much getting rid of everybody on their team, kind of a hard one to do. But I'm going to go with Frank Schwindel because ever since they came over from the Oakland A's, he was unbelievable. Ended up having 14 home runs, batted 326. You know, he just had a really, really solid year. Only plays first base, which kind of sucks. But hitting attributes, he'll have above 120 in contact. I guarantee that. Power versus right is going to be the only thing that's not going to be very good there. You know, probably to like an 80 or something like that. Fielding is not good, though. Fielding and speed, both not good with this card. Probably only Cubs fans will really want to try to use him. He does have a really good swing, though, I will say that. You know, we'll go ahead and see what he's going to be like. But I, I do think Frank Swindell will be your team 55 for the Cubs. Next, we have our Cincinnati Reds and Jesse Winker. I think it'll be Jesse Winker with a Team Infinity Fire for them. Dude was unreal against Rice. If literally he could just bat against Rice every single time, dude would be like Barry Bonds. He was he was insane against Rice. Had 24 home runs, batted 305, had 2.7 WAR, had a slugging percentage of 556. The only thing that sucks with this card is his, his lefty attributes. He was not good against lefties. There's no way to sugarcoat that. With it being 285, though, they'll go ahead and they'll boost those up a ton. I guarantee they will. It'll be a decent card. He'll be a good lefty bat. He'll be a guy that will probably have 125 contact versus righties and 125 power versus righties. So he could be a really good bench bat. I do think Jesse Wink will be the Cincinnati Reds team 55. Now, I hope you guys are ready to see Corbin Burns spam a ton because he will be the Milwaukee Brewers team 55. If you guys remember, his player of the month card was insane. The 99 cards would be even better. Had a career year with the with the Brewers. 11 and 5, a 2.43 ERA, 167 innings pitched, 234 strikeouts, and did not walk a lot of guys. He was phenomenal. Just looking at his attributes, they're gonna be almost 125 across the board. I guarantee that. Stamina was amazing. Hits for nine are gonna be amazing. Ks for nine are gonna be amazing. Blocks for nine are gonna be amazing. Everything with this card is gonna be amazing. He's got the sinker, he's got the cutter, he's got decent VLs on them as well. Corbin Burns, hope you guys are ready to see him a ton in ranked seasons. Now we are finally to my favorite team. The Pittsburgh Pirates had a not so great year. I, I think we all know that the Pirates are not very good. Probably one of the worst teams in the MLB. There weren't a lot of cards deserving here either. We're gonna go with Brian Reynolds. He ended up having a really, really good year. Struggled in the beginning, but came on real strong after that. Uh, batted 302, had 24 home runs, had a six war as well. His cards be nice. He's gonna have great contact. He's gonna have good power burst righties. Against lefties, not so much. He will have really good fielding though. Fielding and speed will be a really good thing. He'll be an all around great player. I think he'll be a really good card. I cannot wait to use him personally. I loved his monthly award card. You know, if they go ahead and, and boost up that, that lefty power, it should be a really good card. Brian Reynolds, I'm ready to use him, man. Let's do it. Now, the Cardinals have a ton of cards to shoot from as well. We're going to go with Paul Goldschmidt. I, I think we had an MVP card or a Citrus Series card from last year. Have not seen anything, you know, high overall for him. So, I think it's going to be a really good 99 overall card that we're going to get. Had 31 home runs, batted 294. Uh, looking at his attributes, you know, very solid across the board. Only thing, he only plays first base, but that's okay. He'll have some good uh, hitting attributes. I think Paul Goldschmidt will go ahead and be the Cardinals team at 55. Okay, so for the Diamondbacks, I don't think there's really another card we can choose here. We got Cattell Marte. Ever since he got off that DL or the IL, what are they called now? Had a fantastic year. Uh, batted 314, had 14 home runs. You know, had a good slugging percentage at 532 as well. Looking at him, he's fantastic against lefties. I mean, insane against lefties. He's going to have 125 against lefties each side. Just, you can guarantee that. Should have some decent hitting attributes against righties as well. Obviously, power is not great there. Big thing with him is he can almost play anywhere, which is really nice, especially with his fielding being pretty decent. Has pretty decent speed, too. He'll be a really cool card to use. So I'm looking forward to seeing a 99 Cattell Marte. 
I don't think there's another card we can choose for the Colorado Rockies besides CJ Crone. CJ Crone had an amazing year, probably career year for him. Uh, he did have 28 home runs, 281 batting average. Looking at his hitting attributes, obviously, he's going to be amazing. The only thing is the contact with his might not be as good as everything else. Everything must be way above 100. That might be, you know, 90-something, maybe in the hundreds. Not a great fielder, not a lot of speed either. He's going to be a, uh, maybe a bench bat for you guys. If you guys are Rockies fans, you guys will probably use him as well. I like his swing, though. I, I've always enjoyed using him. He will be the Colorado Rockies 99 team affinity. Next, we have the Los Angeles Dodgers, and there are a lot of guys that had a lot of good years with them. I'm going to go ahead and go with Max Muncy. He was there the entire year. He was in the MVP race for a long time, too. I mean, he, he had a really good year. Now, the batting average wasn't great at 249. Did have 36 home runs, 4.9 war, uh, you know, 527 slugging percentage. Had massive power. He's going to have probably close to 125 power. Contacts, not going to be fantastic, but they will give him really good contact. He can play second, third, and he plays them well. If you look at that, 91 fielding, he'll be playing very well at any of those positions. He might be your new second baseman. He might be your new second baseman. He's, he's nice. Speed's not great. That doesn't really matter, though. He can play almost anywhere. I would love to see a 99 card for him. We are down to our final two teams, and the cover boy does not have a 99 card yet. Don't know why. Don't know how. I was really hoping that he would be part of the Lightning Collection that they would throw out there that we'd get a 99 Fernando Tatis. But with that not being in there, I almost guarantee... 99.9% .9 sure he's going to be the finest card for the San Diego Padres. He just had a really, really great year. Power numbers are going to be insane on this card. He's going to have some pretty good contact, too. Fielding is going to be nice, even though he does make some, some wild errors sometimes. But he does make up with that because he makes some really crazy plays. Great speed. I, I think this might be one of the best cards in the game, all said and done, especially through a Team Infinity 5. I can't wait to have this card. He's going to be amazing. He can play almost anywhere now, especially with the outfield. You guys are going to love this 99 card. With our final Team Affinity 5 and the announcement of his retirement, it would just be great to have Buster Posey be the 99 for them. Now, they could do a player program for him. They might. I don't know if they will or not. But I do think they give him a finest card. I wouldn't say it was a career year, and that's just saying how good he's been in his career. But he did bat 304. He had 18 home runs. It was a revitalizing year for him, man. It was really good to see him have a really good year. 20, or he was out 2020, 2019, not a fantastic year. But it was really good to see him back there. I, I kind of grew up watching him. You know, he's just been a really good guy, a really good guy in the league. And, you know, I, I'm hoping they give him a nice 99 card. He's got pretty good attributes here, too. So against lefties, he's going to be really good. His fielding, his defense is going to be good, too. Obviously, his speed is going to be horrible. Really happy to see him, uh, you know, and end his career on a good note. Unfortunately, they did lose, but, you know, nonetheless, he had a great career, and I can't wait to get a 99 Buster Posey. That will wrap up our Team Affinity 5 and our last Team Affinity for MLB The Show 21. Man, I can't believe that MLB The Show 21 is pretty much over now, man. There's not a lot left in the game cycle. You know, kind of sad to see, but make sure you guys leave a comment down below if I missed anybody. I'm sure you guys will have some differing opinions. Cannot wait to hear them. If you guys enjoyed the content, please leave a like. Please just subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.